Welcome to KL Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. KL DMI is a non-profit ministry organization raising and impacting Christian leaders for community transformation through leadership trainings, believers conferences, and gospel crusades. Join our faith in action today for youth development through academic scholarships and grooming with our King of Kings College. Child development, which we do in partnership with Compassion International. Community transformation through radio programming and daily gospel of the kingdom broadcasts. Community outreach to the abject poor and disaster response. And the ongoing construction of a 10,000 seater multipurpose ministry complex. Partner with us today by following the contacts on your screen. Um, again, uh, there are a lot of great and wonderful things that are going on, and uh, today our theme is the Great Commission, which is out of Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Actually, I would have doubted also because well, I had no resurrection had ever happened and now this man claims to have resurrected. So it was like, is he really resurrected or something looks like him? So some doubted in verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. In law, I am with you always, even to the end of the, of the age. Amen. Father, we bring a very big hand clap in your presence and we magnify you for you are such a great and a powerful God in Jesus' name. Let your Holy Spirit flow. Let every spirit of dryness be broken and destroyed. Let the power of your anointing be seen upon each and everybody. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. I want you to understand this, that it is so precious. More than I can describe it myself, how precious it is. For somebody to find Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It is so precious. Let us give the Lord a very big hand clap and a shout. And how do you know it? Because uh, I myself, when I was growing up, I was in a certain religion. I sang in the choir. I had great stories about Jesus, but I'd never given my life to Christ. And one time, out of a secondary school where I went, there was a visitation, and they finally spoke vividly clear about how to take Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I accepted to take Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and immediately I felt a change. The next day, uh, little did I know, because these people were going back, I just didn't know where to go for church. I found out myself in a church, and I believe it was the right church. They even made the message more clear to me than it had ever been before. This was in 1979. I felt I had wasted a lot of time without knowing Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and made it a point that if I had the chance, I would do one simple thing. I would tell everybody that I meet about the love and the greatness of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Now, you could be seated over here and maybe you are taking Christ as your personal Lord and Savior as a mere religion. This is a matter of life and death. You were one time going to death, total destruction, and you changed your destiny by giving Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yeah? I believe there are some people that had responded to a call, go and I'll be with you. These were students of All Roberts University. 
and they had actually decided to come because it was not easy. 1979 was the year that Idi Amin ruled, the last year he ruled Uganda, and he was very, very much against the born again, let alone leaving students to come inside the country. And those students also trusted the Lord because anything, Idi Amin could do anything anytime he wanted. But these people, they knew it doesn't matter either they live or die if they can get only one soul that can turn to the Lord. I want to let you know, you may not know this meaning. The great religions of the world, great things have happened. People have made a lot of money. People have built great buildings. People have acquired great education. All those are great and wonderful things, but nothing of those can be compared to your relationship with your heavenly father through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. We were one time like anybody else going to hell. We were very proud of things that we shouldn't have been proud of. We are without a future. All that was put into our past was a total judgment and condemnation. But God said, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have an everlasting life. Now the question is, how do you respond to this love of God? We get to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. He had already told them ahead of time where he will meet them when he resurrects. Now verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. They fell on his knees. It was uh, something beyond imagination. Is it true that this is a Jesus that was crucified, killed, buried? Is it true now he has resurrected? And they fell down and worshipped him. And verse, and verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Today I want you to get a, a very simple revelation. Really, who is Jesus? Can I get three chairs here? Is three chairs three chairs. Somebody get me three chairs here. We want to see who is Jesus. Three chairs and one person. And this person is you. Okay. You're seated right over there. We have Tumweiche the spirit, Tumweiche the soul, and Tumweiche the body. Now let the Tumaiji, the body, sit here. Let the soul sit here. And let the spirit sit here. Please do it quickly. <laughs> now, which one are you there? <laughs> the body. Now, I want the soul to sit here. <laughs> and the spirit to sit here. So now, this is the soul. So the other seat is empty. Okay, now the spirit here. Eh? Now these two seats are empty. Now which one is Moesha now? When you see Moesha the body, you have met Moesha. When you see Moesha the soul, you have met Moesha. When you see Moesha the spirit, you have met Moesha. Somebody shout hallelujah. We can take back the chairs. I think we are done. Now the question is, who is Jesus? We have God the Father. We have God the Son. We have God the Spirit. Now who is Jesus? Jesus is God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen the Father, then you have seen me. Somebody shout hallelujah. In heaven, there are no three seats. When we get heaven, we won't meet the Father. When we meet Jesus, we have met the Father. 
when we meet the father we have met jesus when you receive the holy spirit you have re- somebody shout hallelujah now the superiority oh i want i pray that all of you get this revelation somebody shout hallelujah the superiority over christ over any other religion is that christianity the leader of christianity is not a human being is a god somebody shout hallelujah is the giver of everlasting life is the creator of the universe finding christ you find everlasting mystery oh you guys i hope you have a very big hand clap finding christ you have met your everlasting destiny you know religions are great they can be and build big shrines good places of worship they can make cars they can take you to a better school they can give you a better degree but all those things are worldly things jesus says i am the way the life and the truth no one goes to the father but only through me now when we go back to the scripture and verse 18 and jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Whatever. Somebody shout hallelujah. All authority on this earth, I am the power. And you know who is talking about being the power? Is God. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So, finding Christ is the most powerful thing that God has given you. He has hidden it to the rest of the people of the world. He has hidden it to the wise people of the world and chose to give it to you. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. In his wisdom, he picked you from where you were very prestigious. When people tell them, I am born again, some people can also mention his religion. Just keep quiet. He's lost there. Because none of our religion died on the rugged cross of Calvary. There's only Jesus who said it is finished on the rugged cross of Calvary. Now, it is this Jesus who says, I've been given authority in heaven and on earth. And verse 19. Verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Now, the word all nations means all beliefs. Because the word, we are a nation. We are a chosen race. We are a royal priesthood. A holy nation chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God. So, Abisakas, that is a nation. So, are Muslims, it is a nation. So, are other beliefs, they are a nation. But we are a special ch- nation chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you say in the name of the Father, that Father, uh, God hate the Father. God, the Son, is a member of the Trinity and of the Holy Spirit. That means God in totality. And look at verse 20 what he says. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you in law. I am with you always. Lord, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Listen, when I first gave my life to Christ, I did not know exactly what had happened to me. I was brought in a very, very funny village. Everybody there rode a motorcycle, either a car. so people were talking about a car, a motorcycle, lolly drivers. And when I came back after giving my life to Christ, I met all the young men that were there. And you know what they told me? If you survived three weeks, you would have survived too long. Because this thing does not work. I survived three weeks. Then they gave me three months. In three months, I had won more than half of them <laughs> to Jesus Christ. 
And you know what I was telling them? Come and see. Let's go to church and see what is there. Let's, I did not know even much to tell them. Whenever they came, they said, you know, we have to stay here. And they give all their life to Christ. And uh, one time, I did not know even, I was not even willing to do what I did. I came to Fort Porter not to preach the gospel. The story is long. But when I came over here, the first place I went was a religious church. Religious church may not be that sensitive, but this time they prophesied. They say, we see a reverend in you. I said, me? <laughs> you are seeing a reverend in me? It made me very unhappy because <laughs> I never thought about being anything in church business. My, my, I had other priorities to do. The next Sunday, I went to another church. When I entered and sat there, the pastor came and said, May I know your name? What are you here for? He said, I've, I've come to pray. I'm born again. He said, you young man, you're born again? Today you are going to give us your testimony. I said, again, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I thought about just going through the other door and disappear. But another mind in me said, okay, stay and tell them something. When I picked them, they just, by then there was no microphone. They just said, we have a young man here from Kampala. He's, they, they brought me forward to testify. I can't remember what I told them. But one thing I know, I told them something. And within a little while, more than half a church was slain. They were on the floor crying. It is going. To... <laughs> now, I was as surprised as they were surprised. And you know what they told me? Can you come back and preach next Sunday? In my heart, I said, preach next Sunday about what? Because this mess, I don't even know what has happened. Now you're calling me again to another mess on Sunday. <laughs> now I did not know that when I went, God went with me. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> now I moved out of this church outside. Two people meet me. And they say, your diction, yes. The message you have just given touched me. In my heart was like, which message? <laughs> and they say, I have somebody in the hospital who is very sick. With that kind of anointing on you, they can be healed. Anointing? <laughs> he said, I, I said, I don't know what to say. He said, you don't worry, you just go and touch them. Now we walked to Kavali Hospital. When we reached there, I went to pray for one person. I ended up praying for the whole hospital. <laughs> Everybody got healed. Now, as I was pray, praying, now I, I, I read three scriptures, John 3, 16, 1, Matthew 1, 18, and Mark 16, 17. And when I'm done with the scriptures, then I did two altar calls. When these people gave their life to Christ, there's a doctor who arrived. He was my former teacher at Makerele College. And she, mm. Are you here? <laughs> I said, mm, yes. What are you doing here? I said, the Lord sent me to bring his people back to him. He said, don't waste your time. I want you out of here as quickly as possible. These things do not work. And this doctor was also born again. Religiously born again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I was totally disoriented. I didn't know what to do. And he said, if you are God, he would one person here. I will believe him. I said, okay. Now he's born again. Now he will believe him. I said, how many of you need to be healed? They put up there. I said, you are healed. And I ran away. I did not expect anybody to be healed. I did not ex expect anything to happen. The next day at 10 a.m. in the morning, this doctor shows up with another nurse. And you know what they tell me? We are, we are looking for a young man called Dixon. I said, here I am. We want to give our lives to Jesus. <laughs> As I pray for them to receive Jesus, they immediately sp start speaking in tongues. I stop in the middle and say, what's going on here? 
And then they asked me, when is the next service? I said, this is the first one and the last one. We don't have any other service. I'm going back to school. Little did I know that when I left the hospital, almost 99% of the people had been miraculously healed. Now, they were looking for a little bitty boy in town that is healing everybody. And the doctor said the hospital is going to be running out of business for some time because everybody has been discharged. Now, within a few minutes, I see a crowd of people coming. And you know what they asked me? Are you Dixon? I said, no, I'm not. Are you his brother? I said, of course, yes, I'm his brother. When is he going to be here? I said, at five. At five, the compound was full of people. I preached my three scriptures. I prayed for the sick. I led people to the Lord. Within these three months, the gathering had grown to over 3,000 people. And you would tell my summoning that now he has begun, now in the middle, now he's concluding. Lame people still, we had a, a, a room which is 12 by 12, full of stretches. Mad people in town. Witchcraft, we were burning it in tons. Listen to this. Little did they know that the one who was preaching about salvation did not understand what he was preaching about. He had only accepted the word go. I want to tell you, when you go, the Lord will go with you. When you go, God himself, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit will go on along with you. And when you start, don't fear the eyes. Because one time when I spoke and looked at their eyes, I said, what if these people turn around and around they kill me? But the Lord said, Look, please do not fear. I am with you. Do you know what happened? Immediately, the battle started. They said, there's a little boy that has come from Kampala. He's a false prophet. We must arrest him. When I was seated there around in the morning, they told me there are two policemen at the front of the house that are, are, have come to arrest you. They need your license. They needed your permission to be here. And I said, go and tell them that they have only 15 minutes. If it expires and anything happens, they don't ask me. And the next day, actually it was after two days, they called me to the police station. To give them my license. I gave them Mark 15, 16. Uh, uh, <laughs> that was my permit. They said, young man, you're joking. We're going to put you into jail. You must go back to school. I said I was at school when the Lord called me. They put me inside the jail. I was there for about an hour. I magnified the name of the Lord. I preached salvation. 31 men gave their lives to Christ. I prayed for the healing. 29 were miraculously healed. Now I taught them a song. There is power, power, wonder working power. Do you know what happened? The DPC comes down and says there is a, there's, a, there's trouble in jail. I said there isn't any trouble here. We have 31 saved, 20, 29 healed. And he looked at me and said, you are the trouble. And he threw me out of jail. Somebody shout hallelujah. What I want to tell you today, he says, go and I shall be with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Wherever you go, God will heal. God will deliver. And don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. I have personally met, uh, I think, two presidents physically with my eyes. Actually, three. I met the Bush Junior of the uh, United States of America, and we prayed together. The first question he asked me, what are you doing in America? I said, I'm here to lead souls to the Lord. He said, what religion are you? He said, I'm born. I said, I told him I'm born again. He said, young man, you're too bold. You even can tell me you are born again, isn't it? <laughs> because he thought maybe I would, I would mention the religion. I said, I'm born again. The second, the first president I met was Dr. Milton Obote. They took me there because they said I was leading a rebellion against his government. 
Because when, when they put, they put me out of the jail, here at the police station, the story never stopped there. They took me to court. And the wife of the judge was a member of the judge. He warned the husband and said, look, don't mess up with this young child. That age is different. If you see him saying whatever he's saying, that must be good. They took me before him. Conspiracy to overthrow a nation. He, tra he trains people at night to overthrow the government. And the judge looked at me and said, how old are you? I said, I'm 16. He said, in the whole world, there's no 16-year-old has ever overthrown a government. <laughs> so this young man must be a witness. But not the one that, look, at, look for somebody that is using him. They looked for somebody that was using me and he wasn't there. So they wrote a letter, DC. Are you with me? DC writes to the president that there's a little young boy that is turning this whole region upside down and is accused of over trying to overthrow your government. So we did not want to keep it at this level. Here he is with the letter. They give me the letter and they tell me, you can either throw away this letter or appear with it and nobody will kill you. I said, no, I'll take the letter. When I reached the parliament house in Kampala, it was like everybody was waiting for me. Uh, I, uh, I said, who are you? I said, Dixon. I said, Dixon was a man. He was just a little boy. You know? <laughs> so they went and told him that the man is here. Within less than 15 minutes, I was, the pre I was with the president. And he said, why do you want to overthrow my government? I said, no, I don't want to overthrow the government. I am a preacher of the gospel of the living God. I pray for the sick. I preach the gospel of salvation. And for this reason, I'm here to pray for you. I said, let us pray. He did not close his eyes. He was like, And after I prayed, he said, tell me why are they are choosing you. I said, I don't stop people to say whatever they want. But God called me to go and preach the gospel all over the world. He called the personal secretary who was called Abdul Isoda. Abdul, come over here. Please, a dictation. This young man, with many young men like him, are permitted to preach. I just want to tell you something. When God is with you, fear nothing. Because God is going to prove that he's a God of your salvation. Now, this BPC in Kabaroli gave his life to the Lord. He was his father-in-law. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. The DC, the DC, Mr. Kabumbuli, gave his life to the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. The minister, the vice president by then, Baria, gave his life to the Lord. <laughs> what I want to tell you, when you go, God will go with you. Don't fear the eyes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Speak what God has told you to speak. Because God the Father, because God the Son, because God the Holy Spirit is going with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you understand the God that I'm speaking about today, you will always thinking about going. You pray for your neighbors. You pray for your children. You pray for your husband. You pray for your sons and daughters. You always seek for an opportunity. You say, when should I go to the universities? When should I go to the schools? When should I go to where I work? When will I have a time to meet these people? Lord, help me. Lord, don't tell God I don't know how to speak. I did not know how to speak. I was the most shy full boy that has ever lived. I was even afraid to stand before people. Do you know the kind of young men that stand up and even touch themselves and see if, if, if they are okay or not? I was that kind. But when I started speaking, I feared nothing. Now, I had never prayed for the lame. I had never prayed for the blind. But whoever I touched was healed in Jesus' name. Because I had accepted one thing. Go! Go back to verse 19. Verse 19. Come on. And go therefore. Verse 17. Verse 18, please. 
verse, seven, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority. All authority has been given to me. I carry this authority now. All, not a fraction, all authority has been given to me. In heaven and on earth. I am a great authority. Supreme authority in heaven. And I'm the power that is above every power on earth. Ooh, somebody shout hallelujah. Huh? Above every power on earth. Verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. People turn around and fight you, but they will never defeat you. When I was here, people said, we will have defeated him within a month. It became a year. Do you know my first disciples in my congregation were all the children of reverends and bishops. All the children of reverends and bishops were my first disciples. Everybody that fought me became a member of my church. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you know what they told people? Don't go there. He's a false prophet. And people said, we must have a chance to see the first false prophet. <laughs> and whoever came and listened to me remained. Which doctors turned to the Lord? Lame people walk. Brand people received sight. Miracles, signs, and wonders were everywhere. Within about one year, we had decided over 300 churches. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's, let, let, when, when, when God says go, and I shall be with you, the one who is going with you is God. Don't fear their eyes. Don't fear their plans. Don't fear anything that they say. Because when God is with you, you are not among the conquerors. You are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. <laughs> Today I want to let you know, if you know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can't sit and settle. You, you are always looking at a strategy. How can I reach them? You say, how can I reach this teacher? How can I reach this student over here? How can I, what can we do to go there and let everybody know about Christ? Because inside of you, there's bubbling power. God is with you. When you come to church and you see it, you can turn to become religious. Come on church, in church on Sunday, sit down, give your offer tree, greet a few brethren, praise the Lord, Uganda. Hallelujah. You have become religious. Because let me tell you something. If you have ever tested fire, if the fire has ever burnt you, and somebody delivers you from the fire, you will never stop talking about the way how you can get out of that fire. If you knew where you were going, and after paying nothing, you change your destiny. Now you are given everlasting life already. You can never stop talking about that. Another thing which I want to let you know. The things of the world are great. You need a house. You need a car. Maybe you have one already. You need a wife. You need a husband. All oh, those are worldly things. They are going to pass away. But the word of God will remain forever. The only way you can pay God for this salvation is to get somebody else delivered. In verse 20, he says something. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. In law, I am with you. Excuse me, can somebody clear this for me? And law, I am with you always. Even. The, do you know what the word always means? That I'm always with you. So there's no time when I'm not with you. But do you know where you lose the, the presence of God? When you become careless. People come sit over there, they drink their beers, and you drink with them. And you're Mompeo. 
They come there, they count their money, they say, hey, if you give me a tithe, you've lost it. You've done what? You've lost it. Because he said, even among us, these drunkards, he will always be with you. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. He will always be with you. There's no place you will go that is not going to be with you. I remember that day when we went to Charsozi. How many of you went with me to Charsozi? Charsozi, Charsozi, the first time. Yes, one is over there. I think another one, Mr. Sebagala, was here in the previous service. And we arrived in this village, and you know what they had planned to bewitch us? <laughs> when we arrived, by then we had a Futsubishi. We had not bought so many cars. A Futsubishi was the best. We, 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 we walked in, we never drove in. <laughs> and we arrived at night. Do you know, I saw for the first time cats that we are smoking. And in my heart, I said, <laughs> And you know, in my ignorance, I said, In the name of Jesus, die! I did not know what this one meant. The next day, we had the crusade. It was my first time to see human flesh. People in Charles also brought human flesh, bones, heads of the people, and they piled it to this extent. And you know what they told me? We are afraid we are going to die. I said, who is going to kill you? Yesterday you told us to die. And the only way out of this is to come and we repent. They all came and gave their life to Jesus in the name of Jesus. The Son of the Living. Now, I would see the miracles, but I was not aware how they were happening. Now, the next day, we moved to Chinyantari. And Chinyantari now, they had organized. Do you know what they said? This young man must be, we must beat him. Or Eris is going to change the whole village. Every place he has been, he changes everybody. So we find them with strokes. And stops us at the roadblock and say, you are not going to go beyond here. I said, why? They said, we have enough of Jesus here. We don't need yours. I looked at them and I told people, lift up your hands and we pray. When we lifted up hands, fire fell down and everybody was slain. They fell down on the ground and they started screaming. I was looking at them like this. Finally, they stood up and they said, whatever you want us to do for you, that's what we are going to do. I told them the first thing, you need to be saved now. I led them to the Lord and they were born again. The second thing, you need to build me a pulpit. They went and built it. The third thing, Reverend, I must preach in your church this Sunday. He said, you are welcome, sir. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Do you know what had happened to me? I had only accepted to go. The next day, we went to Shamashonji. Oh, these were drunkards, ready to beat with stones. This cowboy will kill, will kill him. The Kajagari will reach from call. I reached there. And uh, people had stones hidden somewhere. And they said, when he closes his eyes, then we hit him. After preaching, I said, now everybody stand up. I'm going to make two altar calls. They pick their stones. When they touch their stones, three people. Pairs of fires came in three. Pia, 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 and they all fell down and collapsed. That's where all the sons gave their life to the Lord. Because somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to tell you, teaching them to observe all things that have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. No power that shall stand against you that you will ever defeat you because you are not a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you move out, you see power. When you stay in, you don't see power. When you lay hands upon the sick, you see power. When you put them into your pocket, you see nothing. Let them plan for you. They will come one way and they will be scattered in seven ways. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
When you go, your hands are weapons. Spiritual weapons. When you sit down, they become usual hands. That's why people say, when you go outside, we see miracles. There is a go promise outside. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. There is a go promise outside. And I'll be with you always. And I want to show you something. How gracious it is for you to have found Christ. In the book of, in the book of uh, Romans chapter, uh, Romans 3.24, this is what it says. Romans chapter 3 and verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Do you know what the word justified means? Being declared righteous by God's grace. Being declared righteous by God's grace. That means when you are wrong, it's not because you did, you did right. It is by choice that God gave you the freedom. Now you are the righteousness of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. After knowing this, you can't settle down. You have to move all over to let the people know the goodness of the Lord. In the book of Luke chapter 8 and verse 14, what is your encumbrances? Luke 8 and 14. Now, the ones that fare among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and choked with cares. Do you know what takes away your anointing? Cares. I'm asking you, do you know what takes away your anointing? Cares. Cares. Oh, I have to cut my nails. Cares. Oh, I have to crucify my mouth. Cares. Oh, I need a pair of blankets. Cares. Oh, I need a cup of perfume. Cares. So by the time you are done with all of this, you are nothing but empty. The way people, people prepare as wedding these days, you think it is in heaven. And yet within 30 minutes it will be over. Cares. The way you need money. Cares. Listen at what really takes out your anointing. And though when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares. Riches. There are some people that spend more time at the washing bay washing their car than the time they have ever been with the Lord. See more and hands. Sister, I am easy. Get a knock a hole. Get a jerk. Get their hands. Eh? Bands like a yummy. You see, I'm a good. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Cares of this world. Ladies, you go for a hair saloon and you do your hair three times a day. The hair. You know, 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 you Treasures. How many people can spend two days at the wedding feast and they have never been charged for 20 minutes? Ha. A lot of irrelevance. Hey, hat the Lord will bless you. Hey, 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 hati, galukolete, kavala, gala, era, leto. You, you, you have us the whole day doing nothing. Hanti ba izra maiz, hanot amor vansi ba, mm, mm. What's wrong? You mean you, you people, you don't know what you want? <laughs> you know, people sit there in the church. They are always on the tease of attention. We have to go. But there they sit and even relax. Listen to this. And pressures of life. How many, how many hours, madam, 
you spend in the mirror when there's a wedding. Okay, okay. In case of those you know, they are copying too much. <laughs> Cares of this world and bring fruit and bring no fruit to maturity. There are people that have been in the church, they can never chase a demon. I want to tell you, you have been 20 years of salvation, you have never laid a soul to the Lord. You have never slept in an overnight. You come late in the church and you leave early. <laughs> Listen to this. The cares of this world. Today he says, go. He will be always be with you. In Jesus' name. As I'm concluding in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. Daniel 12 and 3. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. The firmament is a space between the sun and the moon. That space is called the firmament. So that reflection is what hits the moon in order to give us light at night. But in the middle between the sun and the moon, that place is, is actually geographically called the firmament. And shall, this is as bright, it, it has no reflection. Are you with me? Because the moon is under, the sun is up. Yes. As bright as the firmament. Somebody shout hallelujah. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Listen to this. It is good for us to build a church. We are going to build it. And this year we are building it. Somebody shout hallelujah. This year we are doing what? We are building it. But this church we are building is a worldly shelter where we come to worship our Lord and our King of Kings. But let me tell you something. There's a heavenly shelter where we shall be forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. So what I want you to understand, don't just sit here and only feel good. Our brother, how are you doing? I'm simply feeling good. No, 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 no. Go and do something about that goodness. Plan to go to that school. Plan to go to that secondary school. Plan to go to that primary school. Plan. Somebody shout hallelujah to go to that family. How are you going to eat your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, that village? Plan a church in that village. You are not too little not to carry the presence of God. Wherever you are, you, you are grown enough for the Lord to go with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Eh? Let me tell you something. There are a lot of ministers of God that are seated here. You cannot even go to your neighbor and tell them about the greatness of Jesus. Don't worry. <laughs> the Bible says, fear not, for the Lord God is with you. Pray every day that Lord make me meet somebody today. Get a list of their names. Pray for them. Go to the hospital and say Lord lead me to those very ones that are ready for the word. God is going to use you. Don't accept to settle. I'm a pastor. A pastor that does not lead souls is a backsliding pastor. I am an elder. You have never laid a soul to the church. Your religious elder. I am a women's leader. Which women are you leading? To heaven? To hell? Because if you're leading those ones that are going to heaven, you must be finding women every day to join your group and magnify the name of the Lord. I am a, a men's leader. What, which men are you leading? And where are you leading them to? Because let me tell you something. Our greatest value is Christ. And we must make sure that people hear. If they refuse, it's up to them. If they accept, but we must make them known. And we must carefully and prayerfully pray to meet them. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are the only priests that were trained by G.O.D. himself. He is always going with you. He has given you. You are not only a conqueror. You are more than conqueror. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
And when you go outside, you become revived. You become what? Revived. When you stay in the church, you get backslidden. You know, because <laughs> you are backslidden. Because there's no space in the church. The space is outside. Somebody shout hallelujah. The space is where? Choir, you have sung enough in the church. Why can't you team up in the three? And sing house to house, shop to shop, and you see how many souls you are going to lead to the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you go out, sir, you come with a testimony. When you stay inside, you come with a confusion. But when you go outside, you come with a testimony. When we were there, they were healed. When we were there, they were delivered. When you, somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to understand. Don't call yourself anything if you're not a sore winner. I'm a pastor, so what? I'm an evangelist, so what? To many the dre, back and forth, I'm Kuruaba, Mokuruaba Zaid. It's new about this. Go and look for souls. Somebody shout hallelujah. There must be a church in the valley. There must be a church on the top of the mountain. There must be miracles at your village. Somebody shout hallelujah. Don't fear to meet the thieves. You have the power to change them. God has said go and I shall be with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Stand up and let us pray.